friends! Welcome back to Belle's Library. I'm Heather and today I am bringing you some of my favorite books that have happened so far this year. So I've been seeing this video a few times. Last year I actually did it and I know I did just like my top five or top ten or something like that. Um, but this year I've seen a couple people where they're just going by month and choosing their top one or two books that they have enjoyed so far and so I am going to do the same thing. Now my intention when I was trying to put this list together was to look at each of the months and choose two books that are my top. Did that happen? Not exactly. Most of the months I was able to choose two. I do have a couple months where I chose a little bit more than that and I do have one month in which I only chose one. So these are contenders for favorites of the year. Basically, they're gonna be my favorites of each month. I tried my best to give you guys two, but in some cases I kind of just wasn't wanting to take one out for the most part. So before we get jumped into all of this goodness, if you could go down below here and click subscribe, I would absolutely love for you guys to join my family here on BookTube. I am enjoying the fact that I get to converse more with you guys and also I do have an Instagram and Goodreads that I have linked below so you guys can definitely follow me on there and we can chit chat on there as well. So go ahead and do those things and then we are going to get started with January. So January happens to be one of those months where I actually have three books I'm going to share with you guys. The first one in January is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. This one's been out for a little while and I know it made its rounds around booktube a few years ago, but I just read it in January and it was so beautiful. Oh my goodness, the story is just heartbreaking. Like I, I don't think I've cried so hard in a book like all year. This has definitely been my most cried. Uh, I, every time I thought that maybe I was done crying and we were going to move towards something that I wouldn't cry, all of a sudden I was crying again. So definitely a very heartbreaking book, but such an impact. It is about this young boy, well, he's like a teenager, and this monster begins arriving at his window in the middle of the night and he says i'm gonna tell you three different stories and when i'm done telling you these stories you're gonna tell me your truth and it's really like it's a fantastical kind of magical realism type book i guess you could say but really it's about grief and how it can overwhelm you and it is just it's gorgeous also, it is a novel, but this edition at least has some gorgeous, gorgeous illustrations by Jim Kay in it. Um, I mean, they're just beautiful. Let me get to one. So they're done in just black and white, but they are stunning and I adore them. I love the art style. So here is another illustration in here. I just, I love when illustrations are added into a story. I really think that it add something to the book and I just I'm a big fan of art and it just makes it a different type of art piece as well with I think writing is an art as well but just combining the two I don't know there's something about it that I just adore. So another book that I did read in January I actually read quite a few from this series but the Wayward Children series I read books I think three four and five in January but my favorite was Beneath the Sugar Sky. These are written by Shannon McGuire and they are a portal fantasy short story type collection um, and we're following these kids who basically find doors into these other worlds and all the different worlds are different. Some of them are a little bit more logical, some of them are more nonsensical, um, some of them are more like an underworld type feel and, and beneath the sugar sky we are going to go into a world that is basically like Candyland. And so these kids all end up at this school. And so sometimes we are at the school in our world and basically they kind of want to get back through their door. They want to get back to this other world because they don't feel like they fit in our world anymore. And in one of them, they end up traveling into uh, Suki's world, which like I said, it's just like Candyland. I really love the nonsensical 
lyrical writing that's going on in this story and just that world. It's very, it's a nonsensical world, but yeah, super fun. Suki is one of my favorite characters in the series and I just really enjoyed that particular one. I also enjoyed the Goblin Market one too. I've been thinking about that one more a little bit more. More a little bit more. So that one's enjoyable as well. I, I mean, I've liked all of them to be quite honest, but that was probably, it would be my second favorite out of the series. And my last book for January that I really enjoyed was Small Spaces by Katherine Arden. I liked this way more than I was expecting to. I was like, okay, this will be a fun, like horror, middle grade. And I just I thought it sounded fun, but yeah, I was like sucked in. I was like, oh my gosh, I just don't want to put this down. This is so good and so fun. So we're following these three kids, Ollie and Coco and Brian, and they're all friends and they're taking a class trip to a pumpkin farm. And, um, before they go, Ollie actually runs into this lady down by the river who's crying and she's about to like throw this diary into the river. She's like, no, you can't do that. And she ends up taking the diary and like taking off and she starts reading it. And it's about this like farm and this smiley man. And she's like, what is this? Right. And then they show up at this farm and the girl that was crying runs the farm. And she's like, what? And they're all like connected and they get freaky and there's like bunch of scary like scarecrows and it's just it's a blast very fun really enjoyed it um so yeah I flew through this one and I was very surprised at how much fun I had with it so then moving into February I read a couple more books that I just loved the first one being The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo I think she is definitely one of my favorite authors. I have enjoyed all of the works that I have read by her, but The Poet X is probably my favorite by her. Oh my gosh, it just hit a soft spot in my heart. I just really wanted to give Xiomara a big hug and just be like, it's okay, we're gonna get through this. You have a voice, you are capable and you've got this. And I just, I really appreciated the teachers and the pastor at her church that were really there for her as she was trying to kind of find her voice and find herself and work through some of the issues that she was having with um, her mom and with religion and just, it was just beautiful and I loved it. And so basically we were actually following Ziomara and a big part of her life is she enjoys writing poetry and her teacher invites her to do a slam poetry club with the school and her mom's like um no you need to be doing more stuff at the church and like you're not going to do that I don't want you to be involved with that and just really doesn't understand her love of poetry and so that's kind of where we're going with the storyline but there's just so much more deeper meaning in here the audiobook is amazing um Elizabeth Acevedo does the audiobook herself and the book is written in verse and it just, and then my second book for the month would be Sadie by Courtney Summers. Again, awesome audiobook. Just loved it. It has this great podcast element that just is done so phenomenally in the audiobook. But in this one, we are actually following a couple different perspectives. We are following Sadie and basically her sister a year ago, was found murdered and she is out to find who did it but she doesn't really tell anybody where she's going and so she's been missing and then we have Wes McRae and he runs a podcast and he's like okay like not that interested in the case as far as like a missing girl he's all missing girls go missing all the time but then when he finds out about Sadie's sister being murdered just a year before he gets much more intrigued and so we're following him and through his podcast, he's like investigating and trying to figure out what happened to Sadie and where she went. And so we're kind of following both. And so you're like seeing where like West is picking up on some of the clues that we've just seen Sadie kind of go through. And it's very just, yeah, it's really interesting. The ending was beautiful and such a heartbreaking way. Like it's just soul crushing it because it could happen it was so realistic to me that this is something that could really actually happen and I just found that to be amazing 
Now, moving into March, I had some great reads in March, but honestly, I only found one that I was like, this could potentially end up being a favorite of the year. And so I'm only going to talk about one for this month. It's the only month that only has one. So it makes up for the fact that I have a couple other months that have more than two. And that is Well Met by Jen DeLuca. I really enjoyed this story. We are following Emily and her sister gets into this really bad car accident and she has to go through physical therapy and she really needs some help with her young daughter who I think she's like 13. And so Emily is coming in, she's gonna help around the house and she's gonna help out with her niece. Well, her niece wants to do a renaissance fair thing for six weekends out of the summer. And hey, they need a parent chaperone volunteer to be there in order for her to do this. So Emily is like, okay, let's go. And she ends up being put into the bar as a bar wench and plays a role there. Uh, and she meets Simon. And Simon is this cranky guy who runs the whole thing and just seems to have a chip on the shoulder, especially when it comes to her. Like, for whatever reason, he just doesn't like her. And she's like, I don't understand what's going on. Uh, one of the things, well, there's a couple things I really enjoyed. One was the Renaissance Fair, like, feel like I just wanted to go to Renaissance Fair and I just enjoyed the heck out of that setting, but also really enjoyed some of the other friends in here as well. Uh, Emily just kind of like starts to make all these friendships within the town and within the Renaissance Fair and I thought that was really great and she's kind of doing some soul searching herself as she's trying to figure out her next steps in life because she did just um, kind of go through a rough breakup and she is trying to get her feet back on the ground. So I really enjoyed all of those pieces adding into the story as well. I think it just made a really well-rounded story, as well as the cute hate-to-love romance going on. Moving into April, I have a couple books here. So one of my favorites was Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. I cannot wait to read more from this author because I have just loved both of the books I've read by him. I also really enjoyed the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by him, but this was just really fun. It's kind of got this Ikea store manual <laughs> kind of feel to it, but the store is called Orsk, and uh, basically they keep coming in in the morning and like weird things have happened in the store and they're like, what the heck's going on? And corporate is coming around and the manager's like, I can't have them show up in the morning one morning and there's like oh, something funky going on in the um, store. So he and a couple other employees decide to stay overnight and see if somebody's like breaking in or what is happening. And um, then things get really creepy and freaky and it's just really a wild ride. So I won't really give too much more away, but there is kind of a backstory behind the haunting that I find really interesting. And um, Grady Hendrix, he has some writing and some moments in his books that just like, you're like, that's kind of gross. Um, but they're just like so realistic. The way he explains it, you feel like you could just really be there and understand what's going on. Uh, also, if you check out on this cover, there's like some fun little things going on here. Then you like turn it around and the whole thing's like completely spooky and gross. Uh, and so, yeah, anyways, really enjoyed this one. And then like when I was just thinking in general about some of my favorites of the year, this book, like one of the ones that instantly pops in my mind. I can't imagine this one not being on my favorites of the year. It's there's just no way it wouldn't be. Uh, Slay by Brittany Morris. I cannot read, wait to read her next book. Oh my gosh. I was so surprised at how much I enjoyed this story. Uh, like who knew I would like a story that's about video games kind of, but it's really not. There's so much more to it. I saying that like you think it's going to be more of a sci-fi book, but this really is more contemporary kind of a book. So we're following Kira and she is 17 and she developed this online role-playing game and basically it's exclusive to people within the black community because she really wanted a place where she could just escape that wasn't in her super white suburban world that she could just kind of be herself in that respect and so in this game 
some players end up getting into a disagreement about some of the functions and the money within the game and basically one of them gets murdered in real life and then the media like gets a hold of this and they're like the creator of this needs to come out and own this and like she so she's really struggling and dealing with what to do because she never intended any of that and they're saying that she's racist for having this game and she's like oh my gosh I don't know what to do and she hasn't told anybody in her life that she made this game and that she plays this game and like it's just not something she talks about with anybody and so she's just feeling really lost so we're following her she part of it is her in her real life and kind of some of the reactions of different people in her life and then we're also following as she plays in the game which her game is spectacular the art like the um the author explained very well like all the intricate details of it which I just felt brought the story to life more and she has a couple of people that help her within the game kind of run the game and so we're kind of following as she's talking to her and she's like I don't know what to do but the discussions in here about race were amazing and beautiful and wonderful but outside of that like the storyline was also just really engaging and entertaining as well and I just I feel like the combination of all that was just so moving into May, this next book was the second, not necessarily the second, but Slay and this next book were the two books I definitely thought of that I was like, these are going to be favorites of the year. And that is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I flew through this book. Oh my gosh. It was so good. This one, I do think like plot wise, we are stronger. There's still some really great character moments in here and awesome characters, but like the plot really like you just want to keep going and you're just like, what is happening? And oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, anyways, so this book follows Brie and Brie gets accepted into this early college program on this university. And the first night that she's there, she sees these people like banishing some kind of being or something she's like what is even happening and they try to erase everyone's memory of it but it doesn't work on her which is really unusual and odd and so she ends up kind of getting involved with the secret society on campus of the legendborn and they are all descendants of king arthur and his round table knights and they all kind of can see these different beings and they're meant to be there to kind of ward them off and keep people safe from these different like demons and stuff and so she's kind of getting sucked into that world she also just lost her mom so we're dealing with some grief and finding out some more things about her mom and some of her magic that she didn't even know she had and so she's kind of dealing with some of that there's also a little bit of some romance in here it's not like heavy romance but i enjoyed the little sprinkling in there uh so yeah it's just it was so much fun. I love the secret society aspects and kind of the, I don't know if I would say witchy aspects to it, but it kind of, in certain ways, um, her personal magic felt kind of like a Wiccan kind of witchy magic. It was, I think it was called root magic. And I just really enjoyed that piece of it and the way it kind of works. And it was very interesting and well thought out. Brie is just a really interesting character as well as she kind of deals with um, trying to grieve and then also getting into this college program and she actually is going with her best friend but she can't tell her best friend about a lot that's going on and so she's kind of struggling with that relationship and keeping that going and then also kind of getting involved with this other society and she's just got a lot of pressures on her. <laughs> some magic just showing up that she's just like, what is this? I don't even know. And she just, you know, she's struggling and you see that. And I think that is awesome in this story and it's really well developed. Um, there's also a game element because you have to kind of, to advance within the secret society, you have to um, be sponsored. I don't know if that's the right word, but there's like a tournament that you're trying to make it through. And then at the end, different people can choose to kind of um, bring you on as their basically they would like sponsor them and they would be kind of their partner in a, in a lot of ways help them get trained in that. and then the other book that I have in the top here that I really enjoyed for the month of May we're on May right 
was Sleeping Giants by Sylvan Newell. I really enjoyed this sci-fi novel. I'm really enjoying getting more into sci-fi this year. It was one of my goals that I've really been working on. I wanted to enjoy more sci-fi novels. It was something I found last year that I was like, I think I'm kind of interested in this and I haven't kind of been able to, or I shouldn't say been able to, but I just haven't picked up a lot of sci-fi and I wanted to pick up more. So here we go with Sleeping Giants. In this story, we are following Rose and when she is a girl, she falls into this hole and into this big, huge mechanical hand. And she ends up, um, the military kind of takes over it and she forgets about it and moves on with life for a while because she's a kid and, you know, that's what you do. But when she gets older, she gets her doctorate and she ends up leading the project trying to figure out more about this hand and find more parts to it. They're like, if there's a hand, there's got to be like arms, bodies, leg, right, head. It's got to be somewhere. So she's leading the project to go out and find these pieces throughout the world and also just figure out more of the technology and what this hand's made of and just everything about it. And this is actually told in complete interview style. So we have interviews of um, the doctor and Dr. Rose and then we also have like the helicopter pilot that's going out and finding these pieces and her co-pilot and we have some of the scientists and different people that are working. Um, there's a geneticist and just a whole crew of different people that we're getting different interviews at as we're advancing through the story and they're finding more pieces and putting this huge giant together and finding out more about where in the heck this even came from. Is it from Earth or maybe from elsewhere? Another piece of this that I found very intriguing was we do not know anything about our interviewer. He doesn't tell anybody anything about him. He's very secretive and we just, we have no idea who this guy is. So I found that very intriguing. Audiobook, fantastic with this one as well. Okay, so now that leads into June and um, <laughs> might have four books for this month so you know I think part of it is that I really enjoyed all four of these books but I haven't had the chance to really sit on them and see which ones are really sticking with me and so that's why we, we have four at the moment so let's start with Take a Hint Danny Brown I this is the second book in the Brown Sisters trilogy and I really enjoyed Chloe Brown but Danny Brown takes the cake. I loved this one. Oh my gosh, so cute. So we are following Danny and Zaf and basically there's like a fire drill in the building that they work in. Danny works as a graduate student and she does some teaching at this university and Zaf is the security guard for the building and she gets stuck in the elevator and so he goes in and saves her and he carries out her out in his arms and the video of them coming out of the building goes viral under Dr. Rug Bay on Twitter and so Zaf he has this nonprofit to help kids deal with mental health while also playing rugby so it's kind of sports but then also you know mental health as well and so he asks Danny, hey, can we fake date? Because this is really helping my business and my nonprofit, or this is really helping my charity to get some attention, basically. And so she's like, okay, but I have rules. I don't want to be in a relationship. I don't want this to be outside of, I think they give it like a month or something. And she's like, this is like strictly, we're, we're just fake dating. And also I'm just, saying this, um, I'm happy for this to be a sexual agreement as well, as long as it doesn't go farther than that. And so she's like, yeah, let's do this. And Zaf, he's like this hopeless romantic who le reads like romance books and is just looking for this happily ever after. But he's like, yeah, no, totally get it. And like, we're just, you know, helping out my charity for a little while. And I really appreciate it. And they've been friends for a little bit, but um, definitely a little bit more ends up kind of happening and they have some feelings, but also they're very dynamic characters. I think that's one of the beautiful things about this series is each of the characters really has some things that they're trying to work through and Talia Hibbert does a great job of kind of just talking about some things that are in the society as far as like mental health or maybe physical health that people deal with 
on a daily basis. So for this, Zaf has really crippling um, anxiety. Sometimes it really like just sets him off on a panic attack. And then we have a Danny and Danny has real issues with commitment to relationships. She really struggles with feeling like um, they, like she can give enough to a relationship. So she's like, no, I'm not meant for this. And so she's kind of working through some of those feelings. And it's just, it was a really beautiful, wonderful little romance and I really enjoyed it. So that's one of the ones for June. Another one that I really enjoyed was What Big Teeth by Rosavo. Uh, this was a very odd, weird book. I don't think it's for everybody, but I sure did love it. I think if you enjoy Shirley Jackson's work, uh, I really enjoyed her Haunting of Hill House. Same kind of atmosphere and vibe to the story, I think. Uh, we are following our main character and basically she was sent off to boarding school as a kid and due to some incident, she has to go back home and she has to deal with her family and relatives that live there and their kind of monstrous sides and she's not used to it anymore and she's kind of trying to get used to it again and she's just like, oh my gosh, am I like these people? What is happening here? Uh, and there's just some really interesting characters. Like I really just enjoyed the character work in this one quite a bit in just the different pieces of the monsters and how each of them really became a monster um, in certain ways. I really like, I struggle to explain exactly what this book is really about, but basically just know. Our main character goes home, she's dealing with her monstrous relatives, and she has to learn how to kind of take over running the household uh, from her grandma. And there you go. And just know that it's very strange, weird, odd, and interesting. And I just, yeah, I flew through it. Very intriguing, and I really enjoyed it. The next book up is Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Um, loved this one. It is the last of the Illuminate Vials, and I really enjoyed this one. I don't know if I enjoyed it more than Illuminate, but I enjoyed it more than Gemini, which is probably my least favorite out of the three. But it just, it really like was kind of almost heartbreaking. And this one was definitely like, for me, the one that I felt like the most out of. Like, I was really sad. It was hurting me. It was just like, but basically the Illuminate Files were following this mega corporation is basically trying to like wipe out everybody on this planet and some of them get away in some ships and there's like, so they go off and chase them. But there's like a million more things going on within this. I won't say because honestly I didn't know half the things that even though it does, like if you read the Illuminate like synopsis. It will tell you some of these things, but I didn't, and it just made it that much more intriguing and interesting. So just know it's set in outer space. It's told in a mixed media format, so you have strictly like interviews and emails and IMs and uh, video camera footage and just different stuff like that within this. And yeah, you're just following these people trying to figure out what the heck is going on and take down this corporation. But it's so much more and so much more. There's a lot of action, but you're also like really invested in these characters and there's some humor as well thrown in there, but also definitely some darker elements. I don't even know what else to say here, but it's, it's phenomenal. And the last book we're going to talk about is Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. I thought this was such a fun fantasy romance. It had me just adoring the banter in here. I just couldn't get enough. I threw, flew through this. It's pretty short, it's only like 300 pages, but oh my gosh, so cute. I didn't realize how much romance was gonna be in here, but it worked so much. Like, oh my gosh, I loved it. So in this, we're following Elosa. She's the daughter of the Pirate King. So Elosa ends up getting herself caught and becomes prisoner on this other pirate ship, but she's, prisoner and her and the first mate like totally butt heads but at the same time like you can tell that they're attracted to each other and they hitting it off and they have the banter that is just like oh my gosh I love I love you I love you I love you 
It was just, it made it so much fun. Alosa's so spunky and she's smart and tricky and she's looking for a piece of a map to go find a treasure. And so she's kind of tasked with this by her dad to find it on the ship and then get out of there. And so she's got so many tricks up her sleeve. Um, they don't even know what's coming their way. She's just awesome. And their romance is super cute. And I just, it was adorable. So if you like a kind of piratey romance, this, this is fun. Very fun. Okay, so that is what I've got so far for some of my favorites of the year. I'm excited to see what the second half is going to bring because I've read some amazing books. I'm so excited for all the books I've read. It has been an awesome reading year. I can't even imagine how much better it's about to get and what I'm going to do when I have to try to pare all of this down to my actual top favorites of the year. Oh my gosh, it's going to be insane. But there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed and I would absolutely love to hear about some of your favorites of the year so far. So tell me down below and I will talk to you guys later.